lighting in here is insane today. Um, it is, what time is it? It's not even, it's just about noon central time, 11.55. I just, um, I just got done training. Um, it is Super Bowl Sunday and I just had like, I don't know, like, I don't know if I want to say I have a lot on my mind, but, um, I'm just trying to process through a few things. So, mm. first of all, um, I wanted to let you guys know who are following kind of my weight loss journey is that my weight normalized on Thursday. So I was up like almost all of last week. I was up like a pound or so. My weight was kind of all over the place, but on like Friday, Saturday, I was 185.6. Um, so yeah, so just about, um, I was like back down and then where I was the week before and then another pound or so. So pretty happy about that again, just like I think carrying like a lot of inflammation from my Metcons and then, like I said, had a kind of OD on the carbs on Wednesday. Yeah, well, it would have been on Tuesday. Yeah, so anyway, um, so I'm happy about that. Hopefully that continues. Um, yeah, because that's, that's why we're here. Let's be honest. Um, so I got that out of the way, trained this morning. Um, I kind of, today is on, like Saturdays and Sundays are kind of like choose your own adventure um, with, with my coach um, that programs um, my training for me. So, oh, and I'm going to eat yogurt. Sorry, I'm starving. It's got a little honey in it too, so I just made a mess. Anyway, what is going on with my headband today? Um, anyway, so um, choose your own adventure, which is typically Saturdays and Sundays, um, about 35 minutes, um, just moving, right? Like it doesn't have to be super crazy. Um, although I really do like to get nasty on Saturdays and Sundays <laughs> um, when really I should be doing more recovery type work. But I just, I love, I love it. I love doing hard stuff on the weekends. It's just... Um, I don't know. It's just like a nice way to like start your week, I guess. So I, I really like to train heavy on Saturdays usually and then train really gross, like gross, gross shitty stuff on Sundays. So, um, so today what I did is I actually kind of made up my own little thing. Um, went down, got on the bike, um, did like 150 calories on the bike as more like a warm up or whatever. So it's like moderate intensity. So like my heart rate was probably in the one fifties. Um, versus high intensity for me, which would be like the 170s. And like, if I'm up over like 180-ish for any amount of time, that's like Pucasaurus Rex territory um, for me when my heart rate's up that high for a sustained amount of time. Um, but, um, so it wasn't like sprinting on the bike. So I do a lot of bike sprints too on the Airdyne. Um, I'm trying to increase my capacity. Um, to cut down on the length of time it gets takes me right to reach a certain calorie on the bike which is not the same as like calories that my body's actually burning um there's a lot we should do a whole vlog on that about how treadmills and all that shit is not real because people would be floored i think of the variation i, I think there's a general rule that like any cardio equipment is about 30 percent less than what your well it shows you 30 percent more than what your body actually burns during that same time frame so just keep that in mind um so if you are doing a lot of like you know sprinting work or a lot of cardio on the stair climber or on the treadmill or the rower or the bike um you're probably burning about 30 percent less calories than you think you are and so just you know if you're if you're stuck and you're using that as your cardio that could be a reason why also if you're not measuring your food that will also get you there too. So anyway, so started out, did 150 calories on the bike, um, and then I went on Wadwell, and I found this wad right here, um, and I did this one, and it, it was great, right? So it was really like, it wasn't, it was a wad that, how do I wanna say this? It wasn't like the Chief last weekend where you're just, you wanna fucking die because it's so hard, like it's so intense and you get no rest, right? Like it's like one minute off after doing that wad as prescribed. It's not very long by the time you get to like round three, you're like, please someone come here and smother me because it's, you, you're suffering at that point, which is great, which is why I do CrossFit because I enjoy suffering. Um, so 
this wad was a little bit different too for me. I had to scale this wad and norm, and I'm not saying that in a bad way because scaling wads is, there's nothing wrong with scaling your workout. Absolutely nothing wrong with it. I would be happy to do an entire vlog on why it's okay to scale workouts and why you should scale workouts, right? You know, and when I was coaching, like there were times where, and I understand people want to push themselves, but there's easier ways and better and more effective ways to push yourself in a workout than putting weight on a bar that you cannot lift. Um, and so I only have a hundred and how many pounds of plates do I have in the basement right now? I only have enough to put like a hundred and 55 maybe or 160 pounds on the bar. I think maybe like 155, 106, let's just say that. I don't even know. So what I did is this wad prescribed, um, as you guys saw, is for women is 205. 205 pounds on a deadlift is well within my capacity. And um, and I don't say that to make anyone feel bad. Um, it's just where I'm at at this point. I'm, I'm short, I'm only five foot two and a half. Um, and I have really big hamstrings and really big quads. And so I, as I told Pulpy Syntax, um, which by the way, we're doing book club again and we're doing the, um, their eyes were watching God is going to be the book we're going to read this month. So if you want to join us, come on over to Pulpy's page, uh, like subscribe, do all that fancy YouTube stuff. Um, and join us for book club. It's called Pulpy Fiction. Um, and it's really fun and we have a really nice group. And so if you're looking for something like that, please come join us. But anyway, um, you know, I told Pulpy, I was like, we are quad squad for life here. Cause he's super quad dominant <laughs> and so am I. Um, you know, so anyway, but, um, so like a deadlift at 205, it, it, it's hard for that many reps, right? So it's 21, 15 and nine. That's, you know, nine is easy, but 21 is a lot at that weight. Right. And so, um, but I didn't want to go out to the garage because it's, it's, uh, noon guys. And it is still below zero. Actually it says right now it's zero. When I went into the basement, it was like negative three. Um, and that's just because it's sunny. Um, and I don't have any lights on in here. This is how bright my dining room is. So I have 15 windows in my house. I think it's 15, 15 or 16. Um, and my, uh, my condo faces south. So we get so much sun on this side. And then the building over there, um, we kind of block the sun from their <laughs> windows. So if you ever uh, want a house in the Midwest, get one that faces south. Just like in Arizona, I think it's east is the direction everyone wants their house to face is east because it's cooler. But anyway, so I just loaded up whatever I had in the basement and I just went after it. And then the box jumps I use, so prescribed is 24. I have never in my life ever jumped on a 24 inch box for multiple reps. It's pretty high um, and I'm so like, I'm not explosive if that makes sense. Like I can't, I can't beat you to the mud hole, but I can pull you out if you get stuck, right? And I can't, I'm not the fastest person, but I can go forever, right? So I'm like all slow twitch. Like there is literally nothing explosive about my body at all, um, you know, in terms of speed. Although my, my turnover, my elbow is pretty good. Like when I do cleans, right? I can kind of get under pretty fast, but, um, but that's about it. So, ooh. Um, so anyway, so I used... Um, a 16 inch box and I'll explain why. I can jump multiple reps on a 20, but this is where the mental side of CrossFit and really any sport, right? It kind of comes into play. When I moved and I was setting up my garage gym, sorry guys, I'm starving. I um, have a box. Um, that I jump on, right? Just like a regular wooden CrossFit box. I think it's from, um, where did I get it? I think I got it from Titan Fitness, maybe? It's not a rogue box, um, although those are on the list. Um, I'd like to get a soft box. Um, those are really good for, you know, when you are doing a lot of box jumps in a wad. Um, so if you biff it, it doesn't hurt. So in June or July, whenever the boxes were in stock, right? So this is during the pandemic where all the fitness equipment is like, it's still so ridiculous, like how much the supply chain is still jacked up from that. Um, got the box, put it together, whatever, jumping on it. And I was doing box jumps and I biffed it. And I hit that box so hard with like my leg, my shin. 
And anyone who ever does box jumps understands what that is. And so since that time, I've literally had a mental block again, you know, with that 20 inch box. And so I've been really focusing the last like month or two on just getting back into just jumping on the box. Cause for a long time, I wouldn't even jump on it. I was like, I'd see, you know, if there's box jumps programmed and anything, I was like, nope not jumping, you know, and it's just, it's so mental. It's sort of like, I'm, I'm sure, right? I mean, and not that I would know this, but I'm sure it's just like a gymnast when they fall off the balance beam, like when they're first learning, like it takes you a second to want to get back up there. And so anyway, so I was like, I avoided the box for the whole summer. Um, I have like a permanent, I had permanent scars anyway on my shins from box jumping, but this was like, it was a big fall. It was like, you know, and I'm not like, I think too part of it that made it worse for me was I, I didn't have my, my stall mats in the garage yet. I didn't have those until they were back in stock, like in the fall, um, or like late summer. And so like I'm in the garage, it's concrete. Like it was just the whole, all the mental things, right. That could have went wrong with that, went wrong with that. And so I've been really focusing on just jumping on the 16. I'm really confident with it. Like today I had no trouble um, with my transitions, um, my transitions from the deadlifting to the box jump were very fast. Like I was like, okay, like, you know, now I feel like I'm kind of over the mental block. So I think next time I box jump, I'll be box jumping on the 20 just to get me back to the, the true, like scaled height for women, um, versus, you know, using the 16, which again is fine. If you're using a 16 inch box, there's nothing wrong with that. Like, you know, when I first started CrossFit, I think I jumped on a bumper plate, you know, which was like, this tall, like three inches maybe, or two bumper plates, six inches. Like I didn't start right out of the gate, like jumping on boxes. And so, um, yeah, so that's where I was today. So, um, lighter on the deadlifts, obviously, uh, shorter on the box, but it was still really good. And then once I was done with that, I got back on the bike, um, and did like another hundred calories on the bike, um, just to kind of finish up, keep my legs moving a little bit. Um, and it, and it felt really good to move today. Um, so yesterday I did just my normal training, um, which was, um, just like a little, like little squats some squats here and there, like, um, split squat stuff. And then, uh, a little deadlift action yesterday too, a little RDL. So anyway, so that's where I'm at today. Um, gonna try to call my dad today and see how he's doing. Um, we are waiting, um, just really on the paperwork to get finished so he can get discharged to rehab. So, and it looks like he will be able to get into the facility that's in his town, which is great. Um, it's a very nice place and they have excellent physical therapy and that's what he needs to get stronger. So that's what we're hoping for. And then my dad is feeling a lot more normal now. Um, he's kind of, out of that cycle of being agitated with, you know, and he has met new meds and stuff now too. Um, um, but one of the things that we are struggling with is that my dad thinks that he can go home and he thinks him and my stepmom can handle the situation. And, you know, so we're really focusing on just focusing on the rehab aspect now of just like saying like, listen, we need you to go to rehab so you can get stronger, you know, and then just kind of taking that one day at a time. So, um, yeah, so that's where we are with that. So hopefully tomorrow, um, I will be able to share that he has been discharged, um, and that he's still doing well. So I will keep you posted on that. Um, what was the other thing I wanted to talk about? Oh, I don't want to talk about, um, Chantel foodie beauty. Not that again, not that this is a reaction channel, but it's a reaction channel. So I was, I'm sorry, I'm stuffing my face, but I'm starving. Um, so yesterday we were doing, um, our Pulpy Fiction live stream. Um, we read Dracula last month and we were talking about that and Chantel happened to go live. So I had actually left the live stream and went downstairs to train. And an hour later I came back and my friends were all still there. So it was actually, it was really fun. It was really, really fun. Um, and so this was like another four hour plus four and a half hour live stream and probably was doing makeup. And I mean, it was really a fun time. We had such a great time. And so Chantel ends up going live at some point um, when I was in the basement. I think I came back to it and they were watching the live stream, which was Pete's birthday. 
Um, and totally fine. Like, you know, she's celebrating her friend's birthday. You know, she made him a cake. It was, you know, a very nice gesture. Like, I don't think there's anything nefarious about the whole cake baking thing. Like, I don't think she made it just because she wanted to eat it. Like, you know, I genuinely think that that was just, she wanted to celebrate with, you know, you know, her friend or whatever. And, and I think that's wonderful. Um, so then she starts talking about, um, you know, she said something about her health. Um, and then she kind of looked at Pete's and was like, oh, should I tell them? And he's like, well, you kind of said it, you might as well, you know? And so anyway, so I guess like, and now it would probably be like four, four days ago, I would think, like at least four days ago. Um, she went to a clinic, probably like the equivalent of the United States is urgent care is my guess, or like a minute clinic because she was not feeling well. She had had a fever. She has, um, like some sores or some spots on her legs that are very painful. I mean, my first thought was like cellulitis, right? You know, which is very common, you know, especially you can get it. I mean, if you cut your legs shaving, you can end up with cellulitis. Like anybody can get cellulitis. Is it really common in, in people who are overweight or obese? Yes, it is more common. You know, like my uncle had it. He was very heavy at his heaviest. You know, he was like almost 600 pounds. You know, he had cut his leg. I mean, they, it was his infection was so bad like they almost they were talking about amputating his leg like if he did not like if the antibiotics did not work and so it can be terribly scary and, and painful and then i know people like you know like my cousin who got it and he's a very fit person you know so it doesn't really matter but it is more common um right if you're if you're overweight or if you're obese and so that was my first thought you know when she started talking about this you know and i was like Mm, you know, but then she said something about how she had had, she's had this before, you know, and it was painful and she had showed her fans and stuff. And so genuinely everyone in the live stream was very concerned. We were just like, like her fans were kind of like making it about cheese because she had put cheese on her mashed potato or cheese on her meatloaf, which was like, I have never done that in my whole life by God. And I'm an American we put cheese on everything. And I just was like, Ooh, that doesn't seem like good. But they were making jokes about like, Oh, it's cheese that's sending you to the ER or something. And you know, and it was kind of lighthearted, you know, and she's like, oh, the doctor thinks I have, you know, vasculitis. And he told me, now remember, this is now four days ago, told me to go, yesterday would have been three days ago, to go to the ER. And she didn't. Or she maybe went and it was busy is what she said. It was very busy. And she would have had to have waited like maybe five hours, I think was the timeline to get um, seen by a physician. Now, vasculitis, you guys can Google it um, if you want to. It can be very serious. Like it can kill you, you know? And and I'm not saying that, one, we don't even know for sure if that's what she has, right? Like it could just be an idea. Like, cause I mean, I remember like when I, I have two reconstructed shoulders, I have two bicep tendinitis. I think I've told you guys this before. Um, you know, I played, um, I played women's tackle football for a hot second, okay? And I'm pretty sure that's where um, I probably, those are impact injuries, right? Typically the bicep tendon tears. Um, and then I had like an AC joint thing and you know, my cuff on my left side. So I had a mess. My shoulder, left shoulder was a mess. And, um, and I also think some of it could have been caused by, um, um, improper form and deadlifting before I started doing CrossFit, right? Like just yanking that bar, like not being set and like yanking that will, that can potentially tear your bicep tendon. And so anyway, so, um, so at first, right, my point here is, is that when my right side first started to cause issues, like they thought that it was, you know, maybe like a labral tear or something. And we didn't know for sure until I had an image and they were like, oh yeah, there you go. There's your torn bicep tendon. You know, it was a split tear. So it wasn't fully torn yet. Um, but it was, a, you know, it was like the, the, the long head of the bicep tendon was torn. And so you don't know right until you go in and I can understand like how terrifying it might be and and I don't know I mean I let me say this my knowledge of the Canadian health system is quite limited I do live in the Midwest um, you know and we do my mom and both my parents were nurses for many many years and my mom was a triage nurse and so she used to triage people from Canada who were coming you know down from Ontario um, you know, in that province into the United States, into the state she worked in, um, because they could not get in to see a doctor because it took so long. And so they were willing to come to the United States and pay cash 
and see a doctor versus waiting, you know, kind of in the Canadian health system. And so, and I have learned that the system in Quebec is different than the system in Ontario. Um, and then Alberta and, you know, the British Columbia, they all have kind of their own like versions of the, you know, what Americans would refer to as, you know, socialized healthcare, right? Because our healthcare in the United States is private. Like people have private insurance. We have the Affordable Healthcare Act, um, you know, which is, allows people to obtain insurance like on their own, if they're not employed, whatever. Um, I have my own opinions on that and like what that did to me, you know, with my own health insurance and my own doctor, um, you know, but it's, it's generally in, in Canada, I believe it works as though it does in Germany, and I have a lot of German friends where they pay a certain portion of their income, right? And, and in Germany, it's quite high. It's like 7% goes into this public health thing, right? System, per se. And that gives you the option, you know, to go to an ER, go to whatever. You still have a copay, though. And like one of the things that I found, and this is off topic, but um, I assumed wrongly right you know that it was quote unquote free right you know and i understand taxes pay there's nothing no such thing as free like that's not a thing your taxes are paying for it but i did not realize that they um one had co-pays on top of that right you know your care itself like because chantelle said something about like oh well my insurance covers me to go to the er like which is great right because i still have a deductible like a 500 dollars copay for the ER, not even a deductible, a deductible is way higher than that. But, um, but I have like a, I think it's a five, maybe it's two fifty. Like, I don't know off, off the top of my head what mine is. And I should probably look that up because it might be important one day. Um, but anyway, so the other thing that I learned is that I assumed, because I have some friends that live in Michigan and we kind of have a joke about how Canada should just buy Michigan and then we'll take British Columbia because like you can have Michigan and then we'll take the most beautiful part of your country and we'll just make them all Americans. And so one of the reasons why my friends in Michigan um, <laughs> want to be a part of Canada is because they were saying that Canada has part of their health system that it's easier to obtain um, mental health counseling and like mental health treatment. And so I kind of did, did some snooping around on that because I was curious about it because like, if you look at Flutie Beauty, you know, and she again has what appears right. You know, for, for an American looking in going, dude, you got fr free healthcare, right. And, and you can get in to see a doctor and you can get in and get all your mental health stuff and all your therapy taken care of. Like, why wouldn't you do that? I found out though, that that's not true. It's not true. You still have like limits just like private insurance would, right? You know, say they'll cover, you know, two visits a month. You know, that's what it is. Like it's no different than like having private health insurance. It really isn't. And so like the only difference is how it's paid for, right? And then, um, you know, you pay for it just pre-tax, right? Versus you then having like, you know, like a deduct, you know, like I pay a premium every month with my private insurance through my employer. Plus I have a, a deductible. We have a high deductible plan, which means I'm eligible for an HSA. So I stock money away in my HSA. Um, not a lot because again, I'm a healthy person. I don't generally go to the doctor, um, you know, but anyway, so, um, you know, so she's waiting to go in, you know, and I'm sitting here and I'm like, you were just told that like th this could be damaging your organs and and yet you're sitting on camera doing a live stream not only has she done a live stream she also filmed her candy like her candy haul right which was not about nostalgia i'm sorry she's using the wrong word she's not nostalgic about candy that she's never eaten from countries she's never been to like you're not nostalgic for that like come on you know and then she went live for pizza's birthday and she's talking about how you know excuse me she doesn't really want to go and i'm like girlfriend like, and I understand, like, I understand the fear. Okay. And that's where I'm different. Like when my arm started to hurt, like when I first like woke up one day, literally woke up one day and my shoulder was on fire. The first thing I did was like make an appointment and I was like, okay, what is this? You know? And I don't, you know, and I, I pay a shit ton of money, right? To see physicians. Like I, like I told you, I have a high deductible plan. Like everything is a hundred percent my problem you know, until I spend X thousands of dollars. Okay. And then it's 80, 20, you know, so I'm paying out of pocket up till four grand a year. Right. You know, once I reach my out of pocket max, then everything generally speaking is covered, you know? And so I'm just like, honey, you know, just, I don't even know what it reeked of. Like it just reeked of like, 
I hate the word privilege, but it reeked of that, you know, or, or whatever word you want to choose, like stick that in there, insert whatever word into that box that makes sense to you. It just reeked of just like recklessness and like, again, like the privilege of like, oh, well, I don't want to go sit in the ER for five hours. And there are people dying, okay, you know, that don't have health insurance in parts of this world, including in like in the United States, right, you know, that are reluctant to seek care because of the cost, you know, and you're sitting here going like, oh, yeah, my insurance covers this. I just don't want to sit there for five hours in a small chair, you know, and I, I get the fear of like, of being diagnosed with something that is is potentially life life threatening, life altering. I get that. But this is not the first time that she has had that according to her, right? Like she has a lot of like weird and terrible things in her medical past, right? That have been broadcast on the internet and same thing with Amber Lynn. Like Amber Lynn Reed is another one. Like she's telling us that she had uterine cancer, had a hysterectomy, Films it all, puts it on her vlogs, you know, she looked terrible, you know, in her hospital stay, all this stuff. And then they tell her, like, well, we can't do a PET scan because you're too heavy, you know, you gotta lose weight, girl, you know, you know, and I think it was like 75 pounds or something. It wasn't even like a significant amount of weight, if I remember correctly. Amber Lee Amber Lynn Reed historians, comment down below if you're watching this and you know. And so anyway, but it was just like, but yet she won't do that to get a PET scan to tell her whether or not she still has cancer. And so, and I understand like the fear of like, oh my God, what if it did spread? What if it wasn't the primary cancer? Like, what if there's something else going on? Like, I understand that fear, but at the same time, like, wouldn't you want to know? So you can just like make the necessary changes, I guess. And I guess that's how I realize that I'm different than both Chantel. And Amber Lynn is that I would want to know, you know? And so like, for example, and I'm not comparing my shoulder to Amber Lynn's cancer, like that's not it. But like when I started having issues six months after surgery on the right side, the left side showed up and I was like, first thing I did, I said, I want an MRI. Let's find out what this is. Like, I wasn't gonna wait, you know, I wasn't. And again, I'm paying for that. And I don't make a shit ton of money. I have an average salary in a very expensive city with high property taxes. Like, you know, I don't pay 7% of my income into the, the public option, you know, and can get in and not have any cost. Like that's, that's just not how it is, right? And I just don't understand. I just don't understand. Like, why would you not just go? Like, just go figure. And the other thing that's weird to me is if, She's saying that she could have, she could make an appointment with her, like her regular physician, but it'll take too long to get in or whatever, or take a long time. I think I shouldn't say too long, but I think she said it would take a long time to get in, which is exactly the complaint that we hear about people in Canada it takes forever. But it's already been four days. Like she could have made that appointment. Maybe she could have gotten in, you know, like 10 days into the future. She's already halfway there. She's not going to the ER anyway. Like, I just, I don't understand. But anyway, so. That's all I have. Um, thanks for hanging out with me. I'm gonna get, I have to go back downstairs. I have to throw the laundry. What's on my face? Yogurt. There's also some like specs on the, on the phone. And I keep thinking it's on my face. So I'm like, oh, get off. And it's not really, it's on the phone. Um, I've changed laundry over, put the laundry in the dryer. Um, and then I'm gonna shower and then I'm going to figure out what I'm going to have for lunch. I have no idea. And the game starts at 530. And so I kind of want to have like, I don't know, like junk food, but like kind of like some game food. And I thought about maybe going to the store real quick. I have generally not been in a grocery store for a year. Um, um, I've actually rarely been in a grocery store in a long, long time. I've been having my groceries delivered for years, like long before the pandemic, just because I'm busy, right? You know, and I like it and I don't mind paying. And that's you know, something that like, I don't mind paying $5 to have someone deliver groceries, you know, or whatever the fees are. Like, um, actually it, like when I do it through Amazon prime, I don't think there is a fee for it. I just tip the driver or whatever. So, um, but, and that's my privilege that I make enough money to be able to do that. So, um, and I fully recognize that too. So, but 
anyway, like I am trying to figure out what I want to do for the game. Um, I am rooting for Kansas City. You guys all know Aaron Rodgers was named the MVP yesterday, and there he said something in an interview about being engaged. And so everyone is like, well, there goes any chance we have at the Super Bowl because <laughs> when Aaron Rodgers has a girlfriend, we don't play well. And so, um, cause it's distracting. Everyone knows that girls are distracting. Girls also make you fat. So all those guys out there, right there, right now, you're listening to me, like girls will make you fat. That's how I feel about boys. I feel like boys make you fat, right? Cause when you, when you start your relationship, right? What's the one thing that you do together? You usually eat out, right? That's like the socializing, getting to know you thing. So that's kind of my, it's kind of a joke, but not really. So, um, but anyway, so Aaron Rodgers, um, MVP, three time MVP, he's 37 years old. He's never played any better. Um, really hope that that seals the deal that he comes back, right? To play for Green Bay next year. Um, but then he said again, like there's like, you know, this little clip about him saying, oh, I got engaged, you know, whatever. He's been dating this girl on and off this season, like kind of through the season. She's an actress, I think. Um, and so every, like the art, like the way the articles read about it, like early on was like, oh, it's not that serious. Like she understands he's busy. He understands she's, you know, and then all of a sudden they're engaged. And I was like, I think he's trolling. I really do think he's trolling. And if he's not, I'm happy for him, you know, but I think him and David Bakhtiari have a little troll thing going on right now. And so I think that's what this is. So, but anyway, we are happy for Aaron Rodgers as the MVP. And if he got engaged, congratulations, Mazel Tov, my friend. Um, but yeah, but anyway, so I'm trying to figure out what I want to do for the game. Um, I'm not sure if I want to order something. Like, I'm not like into pizza and stuff like that, guys. Like I've said that before. Like I just, it's so calorie dense for such little f amount of food. Um, and I just get so blown up from the carbs, right? And the sodium and stuff. So I got maybe a sandwich, like maybe Jimmy John's or something like that. Um, might do that. I could also, um, I saw it could get some food delivered from the diner too. Um, maybe some onion rings or something in a sandwich, but I just don't know yet. And that's, that's, what's really hard. is like, that's how you know that your body's not depleted is when you can't figure out what kind of junk you want to eat, you know, that it's not, you're like, Oh, maybe I shouldn't do that. So anyway, not like a, it's not going to be like a mukbang. It's not gonna be like that. Just some food to have around for the game. So, um, I thought about euros too. I haven't had euros in a hot second. Yeah. And I generally, uh, my body doesn't react as harshly to the euros typically, even though there is a lot of sodium in them. But I think it's just because you typically like it's a lower carbohydrate just with the things that come with it. Um, although it depends on, I guess what you get, right? So usually it's fries, rice, whatever. Um, but sometimes you can just do like the Greek salads and stuff and then your carbs are just your pita. So it's not as bad. So anyway, uh, that's all I have. Uh, Kitty is laying down next to me and I think he farted because I can kind of smell something and I'm like, oh, Kitty dropped it. Oh, so <laughs> anyway, um, that's all I have for you. Have a fantastic Sunday. Go Chiefs. Um, we are all about Patrick Mahomes. Sorry, Bears fans um, that y'all didn't draft him. Um, and I hate Tom Brady and so do you. And don't pretend that you like Tom Brady because nobody likes Tom Brady but Tom Brady. And I'll see you guys all in the next one. Have a good one. Bye-bye.